Hi all. For our notable game today, let's have another look of the great legend Bobby Fischer at the 1962 Volna Olympiad. So this is in Bulgaria. His opponent here was Sharav Perezav, and apparently Fischer couldn't write his opponent's name down properly and, and just wrote a Mongolian. Yes, he was the USA were playing Mongolia. Mongolia, for those that don't know, is a landlocked country in East Central Asia. It's bordered by Russia to the north and China to the south, east and west. While they do not share a border, Mongolia is separated from Kazakhstan by only 36.76 kilometers. Ulaanbaatar, the, the largest uh, capital and largest city, is home to about 45% of the population. Mongolia's political system is parliamentary republic, for those interested. So anyway, uh, Mongolian board one against the USA board one. Fisher playing white, he kicked off with e4. And we see a Sicilian defense. Knight f3, d6. And actually the variation we get is the Sicilian dragon. Now at this time in 1962, the dragon wasn't such an evolved system. And there's a slight clue historically, even if you didn't know the date of the game, uh, from from one of the key moves coming up bishop e3 bishop g7 standard so far f3 now quite often castles is played knight c6 is also very popular queen d2 black castles bishop c4 and here is the slight clue the modern treatment of the sicilian dragon is bishop d7 we're talking nearly 4,000 games in my book the older treatments it seems like this game is knight d7. And there's actually another amazing game with this, with Tau playing white, which I'd like to show at some point soon as well. But knight d7 is the clue that this is a 1960s game. This is very rarely played nowadays, knight d7. So we're actually just, we're talking 174 games compared to nearly 4,000. So knight d7, why is it slow? Why does it not bring the dragon to its most effective form. What's the matter with it? It is just a bit slow, basically. White wants to open up the H file and get to the black king. This battery is very useful for exchanging off the dark square bishop, weakening the squares. This H pawn has got the default rook behind it. White's attack is running by default pieces and positions. Default battery, a default rook. You know, Fish has commented that even weak players can beat grandmasters in the Sicilian dragon. Its reputation as an opening wasn't so great. Uh, so white just castled queenside. We have knight b6, bishop b3, and the idea is revealed, knight a5. This is the idea of transferring the knight over here, is knight c4 would seem good to swap off, potentially get rid of this bishop and this bishop after with the fork. Fisher plays here queen d3. Now, this is actually quite aggressive, potentially. You might not think so. It's, it seems to voluntarily relinquish the battery, which is a nice, pleasant thing to have by default. But the queen here does guard c4 and makes black uh, slow down a bit. So it's kind of black's used two moves here to get this knight c4 in. But the queen can also potentially, once f4 is played, maybe one day it, it transfers to help the rook on the h file. You can imagine it potentially going to h3 one day. So it's not so bad, queen d3. We see bishop d7, h4, rook c8, and then the h file is on the verge of opening up. Knight bc4, and white, yes, is routinely just opening up the h file. What else? And gets a chance here to try and swap off the defensive bishop. So this is actually a really uh, dangerous position now. And in fact, if white is left to his own devices, uh, white can actually reformat the battery. For example, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check this out for you here just to make 100% sure. On a6 as an example, we can take here, kick the knight and restore the battery either with queen d2 or bishop e3. And this is really dangerous just to take on, on g7 soon. So we've got that battery set if here you know we can take on g7 and this is just incredibly dangerous position for black it doesn't even matter about these checks this this is this is terminal 
it's going to be terminal king d2 and white's just getting mate as white's mating black here this this is not much of a distraction this sort of tactic it can be ignored and it's basically a forced mate so this battery being reformatted here the possibility of it being reformatted forces black into what seems to be a curious move e6 but it does set up some tricks believe it or not black's position is not without resources here uh, as an example what we've just seen this reformatting of the battery with bishop takes c4 doesn't actually work so well here because if we play b3 now can you guess what black can play in this position this is really different if a pawn's on e6 because of this queen diagonal that's the clue so what can actually black play in this position which gives black actually the advantage if i give you five seconds to pause the video here just for a tactical test what could you play here with black okay bishop takes h6 forcing move and the forcing moves can really transform positions just winning that rook exposing loose pieces as well that'd be great for black fisher bypasses this though unfortunately for black he plays actually after this e6 f4 which brings out the idea that the queen doesn't have to be on a battery diagonal for the bishop the queen can now switch across and also black of course has closed up his access to h3 he's closed his own bishop not guarding h3 so in a way f4 is not just a weakness of the last move it's bypassing tactics as well and it's able to bring the queen aggressively to the h file black plays now e5 and this is again a tricky move it seems so tempting to react to this forcing move maybe some of us would be tempted with f takes e5 and guess what what does black play here yes you might have guessed that bishop takes h6 again is on the cards for queen g5 check and note the knight this is really worse than ever because the knight's on d2 and e3 so the rooks had it so no fisher actually plays a very clever move at move 18 here a brilliant move really quite crushing if i give you five seconds starting from now to pause the video what would you play i'll turn that off actually knight f5 yes knight f5 and the point is if taking like this this is terminal because of queen g3 then if queen f6 then we have the forcing move knight d5 it's absolutely slaughter time there's no queen g6 here because of knight e7 check which at least wins the queen or even worse white doesn't even have to win the queen white can actually uh be mating black soon with with this this is the most incisive even giving up the queen for the, the rook knight and bishop to just mate here in some variations this is a, just a pretty line where the coordination of the three pieces in the h file is is mating so yeah <laughs> knight f5 cannot seriously be answered with g takes because of queen g3 and this knight d5 black has of course weakened that d5 square positionally but it shows knight d5 has great tactical venom here black played bishop takes f5 and we have e takes f5 so still now threatening queen h3 very dangerous black plays tactically now to try and rescue himself to his credit quite a resourceful idea now is played by black to be honest he's a bit of a fighter he plays a good looking forcing move knight takes b2 we can c3 get some coordination on c3 king takes and it seems to make this work with tempo on the queen what can it what could he have possibly overlooked here fisher plays an absolutely killing move in this position at move 21 it kills black's tactical concepts completely can you guess what fisher plays here if 
I'll give you five seconds to pause the video, starting from now. Okay, he just takes the bishop, offering his queen. If the queen is taken, can you see what white plays? F6, threat of rook h8, mate. Unstoppable. Black could delay things only slightly by taking here. We just take him. We're still mating on h8. Oh dear, there's a spanner in the works. Bishop takes g7. Just to show the concept, though, it's not 100% brilliant for black either, if, even if this was played. This this line is actually okay, it seems, for white still. It's not as if white's immediately lost or anything. But, of course, why play that when you can play this temporary beautiful queen sack? It's not even a queen sack. It's just winning if it's taken. The queen, it's not a pure sacrifice. So king takes g7. Knight takes e4, piece up, thanks very much. Still got f6 and queen h3 on the cards. That's another dragon slaughter for the records. Oh dear. <laughs> if you want to see some scenarios from here, let's just quickly check this position. What's the engine's best defense? Rook g8, knight. Let's try rook g8. Let's take here. We can take here. It's slaughter time. Well, you can see that Mike can even play something like this. With that H file, it's a fantastic road to the king, basically. It's going to be mating black in these variations. So that was with uh, rook g8 as an example. If f6 wants the slaughter procedure here, queen g3 apparently is one of the more incisive moves. If we try and defend like this, knight takes. Yep. <laughs> crashing through basically the Queen can't defend g6 there so f6 is not a brilliant attempt rook c6 f6 if the King moves of course we're just gonna play this end of game yeah so it's clear enough really as well as being a piece up the attack is is gonna deliver mate soon or win tons of material so this game shows an early version of the dragon I mean, it was beta version of the dragon. It was in beta with knight fd7. You can tell sometimes historically, place a game from one of the key opening moves. Knight fd7 gone completely out of use, basically. The way the dragon is played is with bishop d7 nowadays, with black getting a quick knight c4 in quite often. But very, very sharp stuff in the dragon. So here the dragon was slaughtered in an Olympiad, 1962. And yeah, Fisher makes it look easy sometimes to slaughter the Sicilian dragon. It didn't help its reputation as a defensive system. But later, you know, even Kasparov played it against Anand in very high level events with good success. So it's sometimes early systems are not all bad, just the resources need to be found. The systems need to be worked out more to get rid of as much of the downsides as possible and emphasize the upsides, obviously. So here, yeah, it looks a pretty bad advert for the Sicilian dragon in this early form. I hope you got something from this game. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.